so a lot on the go, but where does the party go from here? Matt Jenner is an Alberta Conservative MP. He joins us from Ottawa. And Lisa Raitt serves as the deputy leader of the Conservative Party and, of course, is a former Conservative cabinet minister. She's in Moffat, Ontario. Mr. Jenner, I'd like to start with you. I know it was a secret ballot today, but I'm wondering if you'd share with us how you voted and why. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I won't share the, how everybody else voted, but I'll, I'll let you know how I voted. Uh, but but first, you know, this, it's a pretty emotional day for a lot of our, our caucus members, but also for, for Conservative Party members across the country. Now, this is, uh, Aaron was is a, is a friend and somebody that a lot of us got to know personally and was voted as the, the leader of the party. So to, to remove him today was a, was a difficult decision. And I ultimately voted in, in support to, to remove him as leader. I, I felt that it's been about uh, 135 days since the election. And it seems to be a lot of our caucus meetings. And, and Lisa will, uh, will recall uh, previous caucus meetings, a lot of internal conversations happening when really we need to be focusing on show, putting a strong foot forward as the official opposition and, and ultimately showing a, a replacement uh, opportunity or option for, for Canadians uh, when it comes to this government. Okay, so uh, Lisa Wright, uh, Mr. Genero is, is one of the 73, 73 to 45. Were you surprised by that result, by that outcome? Yeah, I was. I thought that, I thought it'd be closer. I thought it'd be more like 50-50 with a question about whether or not uh, Mr. O'Toole could continue to leave. And by the way, I want to say, hi, Matt. I can't see you, but it's great <laughs> to share a panel with you. Um, the, I will say that I was surprised, but I guess as people start talking about the reasons, like Matt just did, around why they decided to vote for the leadership review and to remove Mr. O'Toole, it, it makes sense. I mean, if in that period of time, from the time you learn that there is discontent in the caucus to uh, over 100 days later, you haven't been able to turn it around, then you can see how it ends up piling up more people who don't think that you can you can move forward with them. Mr. General, I know you say it's a difficult day for Aaron O'Toole, but it's potentially a difficult day for the party, is it not? I mean, this is two elections in a row, two defeats in a row, two leadership purges in a row, and here you are on Groundhog Day going back to another leadership race. And in the Lucy the Lobster Day, too, from a uh, <laughs> shout-out to, uh, to, to Lisa. We'll Thank get you. That. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, you know, it's 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 the first step really in uh, in moving forward, and you know, it, it, it is a difficult day. It's uh, it's it's a day where where we we have to decide uh, from not only an interim leader, but who who's going to run for the leadership of this party. It's mm -hmm. a, from from someone who's you know, socially uh, liberal, fiscally conservative. You know, I I it, it, from those policy ideas, I'm I'm excited. I, I look forward to that optimism to to see where what some of the candidates bring forward some of those ideas. And I think we I think we have an opportunity. You know, it, it wasn't uh, didn't seem it was moving forward under the, the current situation. So having something change is uh, is a, an opportunity to to really uh, put a strong path forward together. So, so who, if not Aaron O'Toole, who, you know, both, at least a race start with you and then maybe back to Mr. Jenner, like, who comes in for interim? Who do you want to see? I mean, Ronna Ambrose mm -hmm. has issued a statement saying it's not going to be her. So who, who do you want to take over now? As the interim, um, I don't even know who's running, but I mean, if, if Candace Bergen was running for interim, she would be my choice only because she has, not only because, but she's great on her feet. She's well liked by the membership. She's well known by the membership and she knows how to run the house. So for me, that's an easy, an easy thought that she would be able to go in on a turnkey operation and mm. she'd be able to, to manage everything. But for the permanent leader. As yeah. As the permanent leader, uh, I'm I'm like Matt. I sit in the same kind of spot that he does, socially liberal, fiscally conservative, and I want to see ideas and I want to see talk around economic uh, economic growth going into the future and positiveness and not just saying no to Justin Trudeau's policies, but coming up with our own solutions on how we move forward. And that's what I'm going to be looking for in the new race. So, uh, Matt Genero, who do you want in the interim and who do you want in the long term? I, to be honest with you, Dave, I've kind of lost track of who's running for the interim. Join the I club. Mean, no. <laughs> I hear you. I don't know. <laughs> um, I guess I should probably figure that out in the next uh, two hours. But uh, yeah, you know, from 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 the interim, uh, you know, Candace is is a great uh, great option. Uh, I know uh, Tom Kmitch from my own province of Alberta. Uh, it's uh, is another great option. Uh, there, you know, he ran our caucus chair before. I, I, Carrie Lynn Finley, uh, John Williamson, Rob Moore. I, I think there's lots of, of good options in caucus who have a lot of 
a lot of strengths that I, I think could be a, a strong interim leader. Look forward. To, they all apparently make pitches to us tonight, so uh, uh, I'll, uh, I'll listen intently as, as they do. Um, in, in terms of, of the, the leader of the party, you know, uh, again, I think it has to to really reflect where where Canadians are, and I, I think we 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 have to put forward that modern conservative party. And I, I think uh, you know, again, I'll say it again: that the, the socially liberal and, and fiscally conservative. Party, I, I think, is is where where I feel comfortable, where those that I, I talk to within the party uh, feel comfortable. So I'm I'm hoping that uh, someone puts a new board. I, I don't think it necessarily has to be someone in caucus. I think it could be could be somebody outside of caucus uh, as well. You you haven't put uh, Lisa on the spot if she's coming back no. or not yet. Uh, <laughs> if my my, my <laughs> colleague Rosie Barton asked her that earlier, and she said no, so she she stole my thunder for this. But but uh, let me ask you. Let me ask you. I, I think it's, yeah. Well, let me just ask you a question then. Like, okay, you've outlined the broad parameters of what you would like to see, but like not necessarily a name. But, you know, Lisa, Ray, I'll start with you. I mean, Andrew Shearer got one crack and then he was gone. Aaron O'Toole got one crack, then he was gone. Peter McKay didn't even win. He still got hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt that he's trying to pay off. Mm -hmm. The caucus just, you know, the only caucus to use the Reform Act just got rid of their leader make this job sound appealing based on that recent history of past successful applicants. You're going to be prime minister. It's that because simple. It's just a matter of time. It's that simple. You are going to be prime minister because Canadians don't vote governments in, they vote governments out. And we're getting to somebody's best before date. Right, but Matt Jenner, uh, what get, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe so. I mean, maybe Christopher Freeland or someone else can say, who knows what's going to happen with them. Um, but like, given that recent history and given the challenges and the caucus revolt that we sort of saw today, that could be a tough sell to people if they, don't, if they think they might only get one shot at it right now, right? I, I, I think I think the way you put it, it doesn't sound like appealing to David, but, but I, I think I, I think it, there there is a lot uh, a lot of value. You know, we, we run for politics because we we want to have that. It's a tremendous opportunity to influence public policy. It's a tremendous mm -hmm. opportunity to to have an impact on on the direction of where the the, the country goes. And you you don't have to be the, the leader of the party to do that. I, I think a lot of members of parliament are very successful in doing that. But at the top and being the the leader of of one of the, the two arguably uh, the strongest political parties is a, is a tremendous opportunity. And, and I, I really hope that you know, people will see this as, a, as an opportunity to, to lead this down that, again, a modern, modernized conservative party that just that re reflects Canadians and, and we're able to form government in, uh, in hopefully a, a short order. So just one last point, Mr. Jenner, this sounds a lot like the argument Mr. O'Toole made in his letter, right? That we need to be this modern conservative party and a lot of the things you talked about. So it's not the message, this was all about the messenger? Is that what this was? You know, it's, it's, it's a tough day to kind of go and, and talk about, uh, you know, successes or, or failures of, uh, of Aaron. You know, it's, it's, it, I can only imagine what him and his, his family are, are, uh, are the conversations they're having tonight. So don't, don't want to go too down, far down that path. But ultimately, getting back to, to why I decided not to, to vote for him to continue was just that lack of trust with Canadians. And I, I felt, you know, some of the issues that we, we came forward on, people were, 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 were confused. They, they, they didn't see, they saw us going one way and then another the next day. So I think, I, I still believe there's a tremendous opportunity for the next leader to come in and really put that strong path forward for Canadians. Okay, Lisa, right, one last quick question. Um, yeah. You know, there, are a lot, there is a populist bent to this party. There is a social conservative bent to this party. The type of direction that Matt talks about that you support, I mean, is this party primed to go in that direction? given the, the, the strength of, uh, of, of the populist and social conservative uh, wings of the Conservative Party? Well, we're about to find out. Um, a leadership contest is a fantastic venue for people to put forward their ideas, sell memberships, and have people follow you and vote for you at the end of the day. And that's what this is all about. It's not just a, a clash of individuals, it's a clash of ideas. And we'll see who is going to be successful and converting people who may not have ever bought a conservative membership into buying a conservative membership and, and bringing them into the party. It's, it's a very important job. It's a very important role. Well, listen, uh, thanks to both of you for joining us on a very important day. Matt Jenner, Lisa Wright, thanks so much. I'm sure we're going to be talking again. Thanks a lot. You bet. Thanks. thanks. Okay, now we're going to talk about what happens concretely to elect a new party leader. Rob Batherson is the Conservative Party president, and he is in Halifax. Rob, thanks for joining us. Great to be here, David. 
So what are you hearing from party members about this, that the caucus moves to oust the leader that the rank and file members actually elected? Diversity of opinion. That's uh, <laughs> how the Conservative Party of Canada rolls. Uh, I hear people complaining. I hear people who are happy. Uh, the bottom line is uh, the Conservative caucus is the only caucus that exercises their right under the Reform Act to uh, vote on leadership. It's something that uh, Aaron O'Toole championed. We now have a vote, and now as a party, we have to uh, get on with uh, setting up a leadership election organizing committee and giving Conservative Party member, Conservative Party of Canada members uh, their opportunity to vote on who will be the next leader. So how quickly do you think that will happen? I mean, here we are in a minority parliament and in a pandemic, so how quickly are you going to move uh, to get uh, Mr. O'Toole's permanent replacement? National Council is very mindful of the reality of being in a minority government. We certainly don't want to uh, drag out the process need needlessly, but we do want to be fair for our members. We want to be fair for uh, potential candidates. Uh, certainly, I am keen to hear what our members of Parliament have to say before National Council uh, appoints uh, a leadership election organizing committee and gives them uh, their mandate to uh, draft the rules and procedures. Do you want to get it over and done with uh, in 2022, or is this something that could bleed into next year? Again, we haven't had the conversation at National Council yet. I haven't had the benefit of uh, hearing from caucus. I haven't had the benefit of hearing from the interim leader. Personally, I would be shocked if uh, we ended 2022 uh, without Conservative Party of Canada members uh, choosing a new leader. Again, the, the, the realities of minority government mean uh, we can't let this uh, drag out forever. Uh, third leadership race in six years. You ready for this organizationally, financially? I mean, th th this is quite a thing you're going through here. Well, the good news is we're experienced at it. That's true. Uh, That's I, true. Was asked, <laughs> I was asked in another interview, uh, how are you going to have a leadership vote in the middle of a pandemic? And uh, we did that in 2020. Uh, but you are right. I was elected to National Council in 2016. Uh, Ron Ambrose was uh, my first leader. She was the interim leader. Then Conservative Party Canada members elected Andrew Shear in 2017. Then Aaron O'Toole in 2020. Uh, we will get an interim leader uh, chosen by the caucus tonight. That'll be number four. And then Conservative Party of Canada members will select uh, a fifth. So uh, hopefully the third permanent leader will be the charm. And uh, we will be able to, I think, build on what is a very strong foundation. Uh, our election loan is paid off. We're in the strongest financial position of any of the parties. Uh, we have 119 members representing nine provinces. Uh, we're neck and neck in the polls. So there is a strong foundation there for the next leader to build upon, but to be able to ensure that there's a good coalition that will attract enough support of Canadians to form government. But what about the regicidal tendencies of this party, right? Andrew Scheer gone after one election, Aaron O'Toole gone after one election. You know, this is, the job is open, again, because uh, this keeps happening. So, I mean, are you worried about that in terms of the impression it sends to the public and also the impression it might send to a potential field of candidates? And that's exactly going to be, I think, one of the challenges for leadership candidates to make their case to Conservative Party of Canada members. Who can best bring us together? There is a huge hunger uh, among Conservative MPs and Senators and grassroots party members. We want to come together. We want to be united. And many Canadians who are dissatisfied with the Trudeau Liberals are turning to us and saying, get your act together. We want to vote for you. And I'm confident that uh, we've gone through such a period of enthusiastic democracy in our party that uh, we'll be able to uh, elect someone that will uh, build and broaden that coalition and inspire enough Canadians to form government come the next election. Do you worry about any internal splits, divisions, anything, though, coming out of this? Because, I mean, uh, 73 to 45 vote and the way it broke down geographically and things, are you worried about any fallout of that? Look, in the Conservative Party of Canada, we historically have always been a, a coalition of uh, different views, different opinions. Uh, unity has to be at the top of the list of the next leader. Certainly we strive as volunteers at National Council to make sure that all the opinions are heard and that we make decisions that uh, respect the reality of that coalition.
Okay, one bit of advice. If you use mail-in ballots, use different machines this time to cut open the envelope <laughs> so it's, we don't have the same kind of crisis. Rob Bathison, thanks so much, and let us know when you make some decisions. Thanks. Thanks, David. Have a great night. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.